Hello and welcome. This is uh, Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and as a part of today's discussion, we will try to understand 10 important terms related to the cleaning validation and what they mean to us when it comes to a cleaning validation process. So the first important term is uh, cleaning validation itself. So what is the meaning of cleaning validation and here is the definition. So documented evidence with a high degree of assurance that a cleaning process will result in products meeting their predetermined quality attributes throughout its life cycle. So you are going to create a documented evidence to assure that whatever cleaning process that you are going to use, maybe detergent cleaning followed by some organic solvent, then finally rinse with the water. So this is your cleaning process. So you are going to implement this cleaning process, maybe for subsequent three dirty batches, and you are going to create a documented evidence that look here now, this particular procedure is actually going to meet the predetermined quality attributes. What is mean by predetermined quality, quality attributes? It is nothing but the uh, understanding whether the carryover is below acceptable limit or not which is also called as a macro value or maximum allowable carryover. And in case if you found that for all these three subsequent cleaning processes, the residue of the previous product is below its macro. And then you can say that it meets the predetermined quality attributes. But it is not only for these three batches, you know, it must be throughout the life cycle of the product. So this is meaning of the cleaning validation. The second important term when it comes to the cleaning procedure is called as a cleaning verification. See the cleaning validation and verification, these are two different terms. Sometimes people may get confused bet between method validation and method verification. So we know that the method verification is subset of, of the method validation. It's a some parameters out of the validation study, but that is not the a case applicable in case of the cleaning. So cleaning process verification, the cleaning verification is what? Let us understand that. It is a one-time sampling and testing to ensure that specified equipment has been properly cleaned following a specific cleaning event. It is nothing but you are going to collect the sample once your batch is uh, manufactured, once the cleaning process is done, you are going to collect the sample from the surface of the equipment and you are going to test that sample inside the lab. So you are just going to analyze the residue sample or swab sample that is called as the cleaning verification. I hope you understand the cleaning verification part. Then the third important term is called as the macro which is also called as the maximum allowable carryover. So what is the definition or the meaning of macro? It is the maximum concentration of residue allowed in the next product as determined by medical, pharmacological, safety, stability and or performance issues. So how much quantity of uh, previous product is allowed in the next product is nothing but the macro value. And I think I have prepared values on calculation of the macro in case if you want to understand how to establish the macro value please uh, watch those videos and this macro value will always be determined based on to the pharmacological maybe the safety stability and the performance of the product so this all factors or combination of these factors can be considered to evaluate the macro then for chemical residues such as uh, drug active means uh, apis Cleaning agents uh, that you are using, cleaning agents, let us say you use uh, methanol as a cleaning agent. So that becomes the cleaning agent. The concentration can be expressed in terms of maybe microgram per gram or microgram per ml. So it will be dependent on to the how you are going to establish the macro, right? So it can be sometimes difference also. Like let us say uh, only in terms of the milligram. So 2000 milligram of the previous product is allowed into the next product. Now, it is only with the milligram. It can be with respect to surface area also. Microgram per decimeter square. So the unit can be different based on to how you are defining the limit. In case of bio burden means microbiological growth. 
Then the typical units used are CFU, CFU per gram or CFU per ml. So the residue is not only required to be determined for API, it also needs to be determined for the cleaning agent. Plus in case if your process is vulnerable to microbial growth or if your next product is uh, having a, you know, a vulnerability for the microbial growth or some constraint with respect to microbial growth, then the bio burden also become part of your cleaning verification. I hope you are clear on these three very important common terms. That comes the, the dirty fold time, right? Probably the, the word itself can talk about what is meaning of that, but still let us understand the definition of dirty fold time. And here is the definition. So dirty fold time is the time from the end of product manufacture until the beginning of the cleaning process. So let us say today uh, you have stopped your manufacturing process at uh, morning 10 a.m. Right, and then you started your cleaning process uh, today itself, but uh, at 2 p.m. So 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. What is the time between these two processes? 10 to 2 becomes 4 hours. So 4 hours can be your dirty hold time, but you need to actually uh, validate this dirty hold time. Now, why dirty hold time is important? See, dirty hold time means what? Your equipment is not clean. The degradation of the product or residues available on the equipment surface can be possibility. So how much degradation is possible? Or is there something, you know, happening because of incompatibility with your material of construction with, the material, with your uh, uh, product? So those compatibility also is very important. And uh, also the microbial group cannot be, you know, uh, neglected as the equipment is uh, in, a, in a dirty stage. So dirty hold time is also part of your cleaning validation and it is, has to be evaluated. Then also called as the something called as a clean hold time. Clean hold time. So once you clean the equipment, let us understand what is the definition of this. So the clean hold time is the time from the end of the cleaning process until the equipment is used again, uh, which may be product manufacture, autoclaving or steam in place uh, SIP cycle. So once you clean the equipment, let us say you have completed your cleaning process uh, by 4 p.m. today, right? 4 p.m. today. You got the result uh, which is meeting your macro values, etc. And by 4 p.m. the equipment was actually cleaned. The equipment was actually cleaned. Uh, so when the next product production has started, you said, okay, the next production batch got initiated at uh, 8 p.m. So 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. is called as the clean hold time. Your equipment was hold cleaned. There was no another process taken in between. You have to also assess and evaluate what is the clean hold time because clean hold time is very critical in terms of the bio burden is the concern for the upcoming product. So dirty hold time and clean hold time, I hope you understand it. Then the cleaning agent. What is the definition of cleaning agent? The solution or solvent used in the washing step of a cleaning process is nothing but the cleaning agent. So there are lot many commercial cleaning agents are so available like detergent. And uh, they can be sometimes the, uh, the combination of uh, different reagents like water, organic solvent. They can be a commodity chemical diluted in water or they can be formulated detergent diluted in the water. It can be anything out of this particular combination. Then the another important term is called as a coupon. What is in my coupon? A small, generally flat portion of a defined material of construction such as stainless steel. SS316 is popularly used, which is uh, actually a material of construction of many equipment used into a GMP manufacturing area. Sometimes a PTFE can be used. As uh, you have the resonance that the PTFE is the part of your manufacturing equipment, so you can also use PTFE sometimes. So let me repeat the definition. A small, generally flat portion of a defined material of construction such as stainless steel, PTFE, and of a defined surface finish, defined surface finish, whether polished, rough, etc., typically used for laboratory cleaning evaluations and or for laboratory sampling recovery studies. 
So this is nothing but the, the plate we generally use for conducting the recovery study. So you spike certain concentration of your API onto the plate. You dry the plate, right? And then you swap the probe plate according to your procedure and then you will determine how much is the recovery found. So that is called as the coupon. It is generally of SS316 stainless steel or sometimes can be a different material as and when it is required. I also often seen people conducting the recoveries on rubber seed, PTFEs and sometimes maybe on the glass surfaces also. So what is meant by equipment train? Here is the definition. So the equipment train is the sequence of equipment through which a product is produced or processed. For example, you are in the manufacturing of a drug product, oral solid dosage form. So how many equipments are you required for you? Let us understand in the sequential order. You may require, let us say, the sifting to sift your material from the, the sieves. Then you may require the granulation, RMG, uh, for granulating the, the drug uh, blend. You may require the blender to blend your uh, uh, mixture of the APIs plus excipient. Then you may need the compression machine. So all this is called as what? The train of the equipment used for the manufacturing of the product. What is meant by residue? It's a very obvious term, but let me explain that. The residue is the chemical or microbiological material remaining on equipment surfaces after a cleaning process is done. And that is what we are trying to evaluate, right? The content of residue after the cleaning. That is called as the cleaning validation or the cleaning verification. The very important term is the worst case process condition. But before I go on discussing this very important term, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub. And uh, I formulated this community to help pharmaceutical professionals. I am on a mission to help pharma professionals to boost their career growth by providing absolute clarity on various technical topics. By creating an ecosystem where the professional network helps to identify new opportunities and people can find multiple opportunities for themselves. So there is an opportunity to become a lifetime member of the Pharma Growth Hub platform with the never before offer. If you are interested, please check the details given in the description and join the Pharma Growth Hub family today. Many Pharma professionals have chosen Pharma Growth Hub as their career accelerated acceleration partner. Now it's your turn to take the action. So thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to introduce myself. And now let us talk about the very important term that is the worst case process condition. A condition or set of conditions encompassing upper and or lower processing limits and circumstances within standard operating procedures which pose the greatest chance of product or process failure when compared to ideal conditions. And the worst case process condition need not to be a uh, conditions which leading to the product or process failure. They are just little bit critical process of the cleaning. So what are the example of this worst case uh, processes. For example, the worst case process condition may include maximum dirty hold time, maximum batches or elapsed time in campaign, shortest allowed time for manual cleaning step and lowest allowed temperature for manual cleaning processes. So in short, what are the parameters which will have the ch chances of having the uh, leftover quantity more as compared to the another cleaning processes or the product? That particular process is called as the worst case cleaning process. I hope you must have liked these all 10 important terms as per as cleaning validation. And thank you so much for watching the video.